People who are extremely overweight need help and that help starts with uh, diet and lifestyle changes and then there are help from the, there is help from the GPs and from the specialists in the hospital that look after overweight people. And when all that fails, patients are normally referred on to see surgeons such as myself for operations to help in weight loss. Operations are, are not a fast fix. They should really be regarded as a last resort, but from where I'm sitting, they are fairly easy to perform and very, very effective. Now, the main benefit is reliable and large amounts of weight loss that we don't normally get on medical programs alone. So if a patient has got to lose, say, 10 stone in weight, that's going to be impossible by dieting alone. 10 stone is about half a million calories of fat, so they need to go on a 500,000 calorie diet. That's 500 calories less every day for 1,000 days, or 1,000 calories less for 500 days, and people can't diet that long. And that's a sort of arithmetic uh, uh, description or explanation as to why diets don't work for two or three years, but surgery makes dieting easy. Because with surgery, nearly all surgical operations have one thing in common, and that patients no longer feel hungry. And if you don't feel hungry, it's, it's easy to follow any diet. And there are many types of uh, surgical operations available to help people lose weight. Perhaps the most simplest is the gastric band, and that's the most popular operation in the world today. This uh, is, takes about 35 to 50 minutes to do, it involves five little incisions, we call that keyhole surgery. And a gastric band, like a bracelet, is pinching in the top of the stomach. That makes the patients feel like they've got a tiny stomach. And most of the time they walk around and they're not hungry at all. And when they do eat, they have this ability to feel full. That's based on the texture of the food that they've eaten and the physical tightness of the band that we as doctors can control. And as a result, patients lose about half of their weight problem in a one year period. We, we, explain, we express that as the excess weight. So if someone is 10 stone overweight, their excess weight is 10, 10 stone, which means if they're 20, they should be 10. We would then expect them to lose five stone at the end of a year following this type of surgery. Now that's gastric banding. We call that a restrictive surgery. A similar type of restrictive surgery is laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy. As its name suggests, it involves keyhole surgery to make the stomach smaller and patients feel full up on a smaller volume meal, but they don't malabsorb, us, but they do feel full on a smaller volume meal. And that is perhaps 10% of all the operations done in the UK at the moment. Another operation is called laparoscopic rouen y gastric bypass. And as its name suggests, this is carried out with keyhole surgery, but this involves not only making a small stomach with stomach staples, but by joining the intestine to the small stomach in a way where food doesn't digest properly. So that's mixed malabsorptive and restrictive surgery. And then finally, there are other much more invasive type of operations where patients predominantly malabsorb nutrients. And that would be the group of operations called biliopancreatic diversion or duodenal switch. These are seldom performed, perhaps less than 1% of all operations at the moment because of the, the late complications we see from malabsorption type syndromes. Malabsorption is when patients eat normal food but only a tiny percentage of what they eat is, a, eat is in natural fact digested. So patients can eat and flush it down the toilet a few hours later. Now that might sound ideal, but the downside is what happens to all the nutrition that we need? That's the minerals and the vitamins and the protein. And if patients are not getting enough of them, within a few months they will become extremely ill. Patients with malabsorptive surgery need extra supplementation of extra protein and minerals and vitamins and they need that lifelong. I think when patients become morbidly obese, there is a, a, a tendency for it to be difficult to reverse if they've been obese, obese for a considerable length of time. Patients find it extremely difficult to exercise and if the operation makes people less hungry and they can lose weight, they need other things at the same time if they have to get rid of all of their obesity. So if they cannot change their lifestyle, it can become extremely difficult even for the most obese patient with the best operation in the world for them to lose considerable amounts of weight. There are many, many prejudices against patients having the surgery, or even as me as a surgeon delivering the service. What people fail to realise is that this is good use of taxpayers' money. Looking after an extremely obese patient can be very expensive because as we know, morbid obesity is associated with so many other health problems and diabetes is just one of them. This country, the UK, spend £12 billion a year treating diabetes. 
85% of it is type 2 diabetes, which means it's obesity related. Now that's a massive amount of taxpayers' money, and we have an operation that we know can cure diabetes, or at least it can in between 50 and 75% of cases. So if you have a, a finite pot of money, it makes good sense to spend at least some of it on obesity surgery because obesity surgery, surgery doesn't just make people look and feel better, but it treats impossible conditions and at the end that saves us as taxpayers money. The, the hospital are not, allowed to perm are not permitted to do this operation for cosmetic reasons. That, that's not even a reason to have the surgery and patients would be turned down if they want the operation just because they feel and look overweight. They really need to have something wrong with them or have such a high degree of obesity that there's an immediate risk to their health because of their obesity state. Now I get a tremendous amount of satisfaction from the job that I do. I treat perhaps 30 patients every week now with obesity surgery. Within that, perhaps three or four diabetics will be cured every week. And I know of no other treatment that cures diabetes. There are many treatments that make diabetes feel and can be better controlled, but nothing actually cures it apart from weight loss surgery. We get patients walking who haven't walked for a while. They, they can come into the clinic room without crutches or frames, yet the first time round they came in on a mobility scooter. We get patients off disability living allowance, which again saves money for us as taxpayers. Um, and there is an ultimate satisfaction in knowing that every year about 30 tonnes of weight loss is lost out there every year as, as a result of the operations which I do.